Excited for another episode on the i2 podcast and always excited to sit down with individuals who uh, just have amazing stories and God has used in so many different ways. I am joined today by Lori Hogan. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Excited to have you on the podcast. I was excited that you invited me, Josh. That's so awesome. I love your story. Love what you and your husband have been a part of building for uh, some time now. Just for our listeners, give us a picture. Uh, you know, what do you do? A little bit of your family, your background, and then we'll jump into some more of your story. Okay. Well, I am uh, married. I have a husband, Paul. My husband, Paul, and I have four children. And our oldest is Lakeland. She's 30. She works in the business with us at yeah. Home Instead Senior Care. And I have a, a, a she's our actually getting her PhD in wow. social gerontology. So I have it, no clue what that means. You know, it's working with the aging population. Yes. And yes. what's so exciting about that is we've always wanted one of our kids to go mm. into the business. And so we're very excited that she yeah. is She is making a difference uh, wow. in the lives of seniors. And she travels around and does a lot of work that way and represents Home Instead very well. So cool. And uh, then we have a daughter, Mikkel. She is married. She is Mikkel Gorman now. Um, she married a Scottish boy from okay. uh, Scotland. Uh, she's an actress. And so is wow. he. They live in New York and live in their dreams. So yeah. that's yeah, exciting for I love them. it. Our son, Martin, he is about to be married next month, and we're so excited about that. He's mm. um, in the hunting, fishing, gaming industry. Okay. Very exciting. And then our daughter, Jacqueline, is a nurse. Um, she's 24. She got married in June, so lots of weddings wow. in our yeah, family here. you guys have been here. pretty busy. <laughs> we have been, which has been exciting. And she's yeah. a nurse. She's working for Fusion right now. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, so you, got a, you, got a, you, got a, you got a full family. That's a little bit about the family background. Yeah. And and uh, so I am co-founder, along with my husband, Paul, for Home Instead Senior Care, which yeah. we started 25 years wow. ago. Wow. So That's amazing. Um, do you want me to go into that story? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely want to jump into it. Number one, it's amazing. 25 years ago, you started Home Instead yes. Senior Care. To see the trajectory the business has been on while raising a family during many of those years. Maybe just talk about that reality for you, especially as a mother, as a working mom, what was that like for you? Okay. It was a little crazy, yeah, to be honest, Josh, imagine. as you can imagine. You yeah. have a family of three, so you know what it's like. Yeah. Um, well, my husband was working um, uh, at the corporate headquarters at Mary Maids when okay. we first got this brainstorm of um, opening up a home instead senior care. Yep. That was our dream to own a, our own business mm. and help as many seniors as we possibly can because yep. of the experience with his um, grandmother who is 89 years old and she was aging. Wow. Um, she was in her own one bedroom apartment down the street mm. from his mother's house where he grew up, where, where Paul grew up. And um, she, his, his grandma, Grandma Manhart, became so weak that she mm. couldn't get out of her chair anymore. She wasn't eating properly, not getting enough nutrition, mm. became really weak. The family decided that they were going to get together, and they decided on one thing, Josh, mm. that Grandma Manhart was not going to go into a nursing home. Wow. She would move up the street to mm. Catherine's home, uh, where Paul grew up, and live there for maybe what seemed to be one more year of life. Mm. And so the whole family rallied, rallied around her. So she had daughters that were nurses, would come wow. and help bathe her and make sure that she was taking their medications. Mm. And then the rest of the family, grandkids would come, um, fix meals and sit down and, and visit with her, take her for a uh, walk around the block mm. or so. She gained so much strength. Wow that she ended up living 11 more years. Wow, that's So we amazing. got to celebrate her 100th birthday. Oh my goodness. And we kept thinking, what do other families do that don't, are not like a Catholic right. family with 12 children, right. 50 grandchildren, 51 <laughs> great grandkids. Yeah. Um, what do they do? Mm. So we decided that we wanted to be family where maybe family lived far away and couldn't help their their grandparents or their, their parents and um, give them that assistance, mm -hmm. not to take the place of family, but to enhance the family wow. and their their care. So we decided that we would start Home Instead Senior Care. And at the time, we had three children wow. and, you know, all underneath five years old or whatever. And um, so my husband quit his job. His mother thought he was absolutely crazy wow. for doing that. Yeah. But she supported us so much and let us start the business in her home. Wow. And um, 
and where we were right near Grandma Manhart, so we can look in on her mm. and be there for her. Wow. My mother was our very first uh, employee mm. because she used to work for Paul at Mary Maids mm. and was his assistant. And they worked together so well. I mean, really, how many um, husbands can work <laughs> with their mother-in-law, right? right? But they had a great relationship. And yeah. they, they um, kicked it, hit it off really well. Wow. And, so um, that's how we started Home Instead was out of the need. We saw a need and filled a niche where, yes. you know, the medical world, you don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to open up a can of soup or push yes. a vacuum cleaner, turn yes. off a stove. Um, sometimes seniors just need a little extra help yep. to remain in their own home where 90% of all seniors want to remain. Right. So that's how we kind of started Home Instead. That's amazing. Was out of the need of our own family. I, I absolutely love that because... Like you said, it was it was out of a real need, and it was it was personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the risk you took—you had three kids. Your husband Paul quits his job to start this company, and the family that rallied around you guys. I, I think you know many times when we talk about influence and people using what God has given them, a lot of times it's where the needs are right in front of us. Right. And exactly. so you wanted to start a business. There was a need, a family member who needed some care. And you guys just started the process over the course of uh, however many more years, 11 years of caring for her and seeing her come to life and get strong and healthy. And you take this model out of meeting a practical need and start to build a business around it. Exactly. The power of care, which is, is for me what your story represents when it comes to our influence there is power when we care for people in the right way. So you guys build this business 25 years later, just to give uh, those listening perspective, give us a snapshot of your business today, and then we'll talk about how you got there. But just okay. give us a picture of what your business looks like today. Okay. Well, we figured if, if it could work in Omaha, Nebraska, why couldn't it work anywhere else? Mm. Because as you know, there's aging people everywhere, right? Yes. And yes. Uh, the population size is growing by leaps and bounds, 10,000 a day. Um, seniors mm. turning 65 and older. Wow. But um, so we we started as franchising because that's what my husband did in Mary Maids. Okay. And he studied franchising at UNL mm. and decided that that's the fastest way to grow the business mm. is by um, having a great training program yep. that you can um, attract others who have that desire or feel a mission to serve seniors and who yep. love seniors and, and want to help their communities. Mm. And so it started off with my uncle from Lincoln. Okay. It was at Thanksgiving. You guys had, I love yeah. the family exactly. theme here. <laughs> exactly. That love and support yeah. from family is so important, as you know. Yes, big <laughs> You're time. surrounded by your family. Yes. So my uncle from Lincoln and aunt, they said, okay, we've watched you for a year mm. and we know that you know franchising. We would like to do this in Lincoln. Wow. And so at, in a fevered pitch, we put together our training program mm. around the um, dining room table at Paul's mom's house. And um, we put together this training program, put my aunt and uncle through it and help them since it was great because they were so close yes and yes. got them started in their business mm. and then it was a um a, a fraternity brother of my husband's from okay. kansas yep. kansas city that wanted to do a franchise and then wow. it was a brother-in-law down in georgia and then pretty soon after several of them there was somebody that we didn't know mm. and he was from Utah wow. that wanted to start a home instead. And let me tell you, we were terrified <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because um, we felt like we were responsible for some of these people's mm. livelihood and will they make it? Will we make it? Right. And uh, some of the thought processes that went through that, but we truly believe that God had brought mm. us to this point. Wow. God had um, planted that seed in our minds mm. and that, I I think after watching Mary Maid's their growth mm. that we knew that this could be really big. Yep. So now what started with one franchise in Omaha, Nebraska, we have over 1200 across the the world. We're in 14 countries now. Wow. And um so it's it's really exciting. I never knew that I would be in a position where I am meeting people from all over the world and influencing wow. people all over the world um who who have a love for seniors mm. and helping their communities age successfully. So it is so oh. exciting, so enriching, so gratifying, mm. and 
We love it. That's amazing. So how many, just from a staff perspective, employee perspective, how many employees do you guys have that help carry out that work all over the world? Oh my, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's see. At the, our global headquarters here in Omaha, we have over 200. Yep. Um, and then when you add up a lot of the um, caregivers, the awesome, amazing caregivers, there's about 90,000 oh around the world that are helping or that are in the homes of seniors Come each on. and every day. We are doing over 90 million hours of care mm. just this year alone. Come on. But, you know, we feel like McDonald's when they reach the <laughs> billion dollar burgers, yes. you know, served. Yeah, we feel so blessed to be. Wow helping uh, those seniors and their families. That's the key is families are so relieved to have that help in their home. And, and uh, But it's not always their own home. It could be yeah. the child's home or it could mm. be assisted living or nursing home. We can follow yeah. them right in and, and mm. help assist and be the, the extra eyes to give them you know that peace of mind that we all need to have as we're wow. Caring for our seniors. Come on. So yeah. good. I just want to like clap over here. And, yeah. Like <laughs> look at my sister Kriana over here. Like, I mean, this is oh. th number one, this is why I wanted to sit down and talk and just mm. uh hear and, and share your story because it's so powerful. And the impact you guys are having right now, 90 million hours of care that's given. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Mm, I can't even I love it. fathom those I numbers. Love it. I but just... I love too the picture of you guys starting in one home mm -hmm. with one person. Mm -hmm. And over 25 years, how you've seen that grow and expand. And I love your model of franchising. And and, and, and the, the fact that you started with family members and friends, because they kind of understood you guys and probably exactly. the culture you wanted to carry on. And they were able to reproduce that culture. Talk about your culture okay. and your values. And when it comes to care, what does that look like? Because that mm. that has to be essential to the business that you're providing. My heart is just racing Come right on. now. It's, oh my gosh. Um, okay, I'll talk about the culture. We definitely have a caring culture. Yeah. Very loving culture. And I think this business automatically just kind of attracts that kind of person. Yeah. And always, Josh, we're praying that God provides us people who truly care about the seniors and yep. have a love for them and a deep sense of mission. Mm. Um, when we started Home Instead, we knew that we were going to take God as our business partner mm. because we knew with him at the helm, mm. how could we fail? Wow. And then we Wait, decided- I just gotta, oh, I, I'm yeah. sorry. I got to pause you right there because mm -hmm. you just said, God as your business partner. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody else say that before. No way. I've heard people say, you know, I want to bring God into my business environment and I want to try to live out the values that I know to be true of my faith. But God as your business partner mm -hmm. is a radical concept. And I mm. think it's it, it's so powerful because we see a picture in you guys of what happens when God is our business partner. Absolutely. And you can have a thriving, flourishing business with God as your primary partner. I mean, that's that's isn't pretty that, powerful. Crown, cool? have you ever heard that before? I mean, Crown's <laughs> over here dropping the mic over here. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's, it's him. And give credit where credit is due, yeah. right? Because all good things come from him. Mm. And uh, But then we decided that we were going to establish four core values. Okay that are very important to us. There are guiding principles mm. at Home Instead. And number one is to honor God in all we do. Wow. Um, we know that we, you know, we have a lot of decisions to make every day in yes. our businesses. And, mm. you know, we really, uh, is that honoring of God? If mm. it's not, better not be doing it. Wow. So we really um, adjust so everything good. to that. Mm. And, and our second core value is um, treat each other with dignity and respect. Mm. Sometimes that's not always easy to right. do, too, when um, there's mm. hard decisions or just different people that you work with and, and such. But wow. And even um, as we treat our seniors and our elders, that they need mm. to be treated with dignity and respect, that's our good. greatest generation. Mm. Our third core value is to encourage growth in ourselves and others. Wow. And I will tell you that was probably one of the hardest uh, core values to really uphold mm. in the business. And I'll tell you why is because, 
you know, people are at different stages in their life of growth and development. And how do you bring value to that and give them something that can really help them grow? So we're always Mm. looking at training programs and leadership programs now. And especially now that our businesses have gotten much larger than we ever dreamed that they would. And then how do you develop those people to handle multiple businesses and a lot of people and such. So that's always been a big challenge. The last core value is to build value in our service Mm. to others. And that is always fun, exciting, invigorating, um, always having to be creative and how we deliver Mm. the best quality care to our our seniors, but also um, for our franchise owners and partners internationally and building value to them as Mm. well so that we stay relevant and on top of things with, you know, the next technologies. And that's been a huge challenge, Josh, in Mm. the business, keeping up with the technology. Yeah, Yeah. I can't imagine. I can't imagine just the way our world is changing and so Mm -hmm. fast. And Mm -hmm. I'm I'm considered, you know, I'm a millennial, and I can't keep up with any <laughs> of it. I feel like I'm, I'm so sure you're far much behind. better than I am. You've oh. got your little watch on. I don't even I mean, have I one of those. I mostly use this this smartwatch to tell time. Yeah. Oh. So, but everything's just changing so much. I love those four values. How do you coach, teach, reproduce mm-hmm. those within your teams, and especially as you think globally? I mean, you're not just thinking locally. You guys are doing it globally. How do you make sure everybody's living those out on a consistent basis? That's interesting because um, we realize that repetition is important. Yes. You know, if you only state it once and not again or put it up on a wall and never talk about it again, yep. um, you're doing yourself a disjustice. Dis- Disjustice. Yep. Um, you got to be talking about it all the time to where somebody could even mock you and repeat it yep, yep. Uh, the, in your voice or <laughs> whatever. Right. And so our core values are on little plaques on everybody's desks. Mm. They're up on our walls. And I will tell you, Josh, it is internal only. Okay. Um, we're not advertising it, although yeah. I like to speak about it, <laughs> yeah. but we're not um, in advertisements. Mm. It, that's not where we're about. But yeah. we want people to know where we come from, who we are. Mm. So as we interview people, we sit down with them, our franchise owners, and um, even our some of our caregivers, what have you, our staff members. Yeah. And we tell them, these are our core values. Wow. This is important to us. And if you can identify with those and, you know, this might be right for you and it yep. might not be right for you. And that's okay. Yep. And we don't impress them upon everybody as far mm. as like our franchise owners. They can make up their own core values. But we tell them it's important that you do this so that that's people good. understand you and mm. who you are. And um, so anyway, it's it's been something that I have realized that it's not just me and Paul's responsibility. Yes. Um, yeah. To continue to preach the culture, live the culture, yeah. and our guiding principles, it's everybody's responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody realizes that in our um, system and in our organization, and they take that responsibility very seriously. I think that, you know, and of course, you have to have fun along the way, right, don't you? Right. It can't be all just serious because <laughs> right. there's some serious stuff that people deal with yes. on a yes. daily basis. You know, I admire those caregivers. I don't know, Josh if I could do what they do. Yeah. It is so humbling yeah. what our caregivers uh, on a daily basis, yep. how they care for those seniors. Yep. And um, I'm just, I'm, I, I think they have a different DNA, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they are um, beautiful souls, and we appreciate our caregivers so very, very much. That's so good. So, yeah. I, I want to lean into one of your values, just because I think there's so many business leaders out there and the partnership with God and your your mm. your number one value mm-hmm. being to honor God. To me, that's so interesting because in the culture and the world we live in, even in the nonprofit world, you know, there's 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 these lines between business and faith and what you believe. You're right. Mm-hmm. And so when you're hiring people mm-hmm. and you start to share those values, mm-hmm. how do you talk about that? Like just practically, what does that look like for you guys? Um I remember sitting in a lot of interviews with people across the the table, and we would tell them that, you know, honoring God in all we do, it's a a very important core value, and we want to share that with you. And I remember one gentleman going, he starts fidgeting, and he goes, um... Um, 
I, I don't always go to church all the time. Yeah. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah. I just want you to, do you believe in a higher power? And he goes, oh, yes, I do. I do. And yeah. uh, so we get some of that sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. we just, I just feel like, you know, God has had his hand upon us. Big time. All, I mean, mm. always from the start. Mm. And we saw this vision that he gave to us wow. and, and nurtured it within us. Mm. Um, and the, just the love of him has just grown. Mm. And I, I just feel like I can hardly talk about the business without, you know, honoring, honoring yeah, him. That's so good. Because I learned um, one time, I'll share with you, Josh. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the beginning when we were growing very quickly, people would say to us, even our friends, our close friends, and, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, you're doing so well. I can't believe how fast you've grown. Mm. And, and a lot of times I go, oh, yeah, yeah, like, mm. yeah, we're doing this all right. Yeah. And God literally tapped me on mm. the shoulder and said, Lori, who's doing this? Wow. And I went, oh, God, wow. mm. you're right. It's you. It's all you. Thank you for empowering us. Thank wow. you for bringing people along who are much more smarter and more creative than we wow. are. But you have been doing this. And from then on out, you know, I always make sure I smell the bouquet, but then hand it to him. Wow. So that's, that's so good. what I've learned. And yeah. it's, been, it's been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. Wow. Business, and, and, so. and I think that's one of the reasons God's continuing to use you and your husband and your mm. business in such a powerful way. I love that you shared that. And, and one of the things I love is you're not trying to force God onto people, but you're letting them know what you guys believe. Right. And we're right. going to honor God. This is a culture where we're going to honor God in mm -hmm. everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And and we're going to leave the results to him Ooh, there and you go. watch what happens. Mm -hmm. I will tell you one time, um, I've had this conversation with Paul, mm. and he's very mindful of other religions in our organization, as yep. we should be, yep. and be very respectful of them, our second core value, right? Yeah. Um, and there had been times when I say, you know, oh, but we're Christians and we should, you know, do yeah. this or that. And Paul says, we need to be mm. respectful of other religions. And yes. so I, I am mindful of that. Yes. That is important. Yes. So, so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yesterday, my uh, six-year-old daughter had her friend over, and she came to my wife, and, and she said, can I tell her about Jesus? Can I tell her about Jesus? Aww, <laughs> she sweet. was so intent about telling her. But then we heard her talking to her in different tones and different voices. <laughs> we said, would you just be Jesus? <laughs> Don't be worried about what you're saying. Just just be nice, be kind, be gentle. Yes. And sometimes I think we are so focused on telling people what we believe. Exactly. Instead of just being sharing. Being the example. Yeah, too. being the example. And I think that's what Paul is also telling yeah. me. We can, we can lead others by yeah. example. And that's been a big part of our um, mission, too, is yeah. to be the light of Christ and um, extend that love to others. Yeah. You talked about the caregiver mm -hmm. and just how intense that role is. And you wrote a book. Yes. Called Strength for the Moment. Yes. I believe. Yes. Strength and, for the Moment. And specifically wrote it for the caregiver. Mm -hmm. Talk about that book, because I, I love, you know, we can only give what we have. And caregivers give so much. They do. And this book was meant for the caregiver. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that book. Yes, it is an inspiration for family caregivers. Mm. Um, we have a program at Home Instead. It's the Caregiver of the Year program. But that's a professional caregiver that works yeah. for us. And then we um, crown them at uh, our convention in Omaha in April. Mm. Um, it goes through a nomination process. And we get to read these amazing stories wow. about our caregivers. And and how they care for the seniors and how they go above and beyond. And what they do is they find out what does that senior enjoy doing mm. or maybe in the past, find out about their past and their their businesses. One was a farmer. And so they would take them in the car, go for a ride in the country. And even one had a friend mm. who lived on a farm so that he they could take them there and see the cows and the pigs wow. and really wow. relate to what they used to do and mm. found that, such joy in that. But um, family caregivers, they don't always get the accolades. They're not right. crowned the caregiver of the year. And, you know, how how do they cope? How do they mm. get by? It's not just physical care. Yep. It's also emotional and spiritual care. Mm -hmm. And so we have a couple books on the physical side of caring mm. um, for seniors. But 
I wanted to write a book that was talking about the spiritual, emotional wow. side. There are so many emotions that people mm. feel. It's unreal. Like, um, there are stories in the book that talk about um, I'm the only one out of my brothers and sisters that will care for right. my parent. Nobody's there helping mm. me, and they feel that resentment. Yep. There's another one, Yoshino Nakajima, who is from Japan. Mm. Her parents lived in Japan, but she was here in the United States, and she felt such guilt mm. that she wasn't able to be there personally to do the care and that her other sibling had to when mm. it was really her responsibility as wow. the oldest daughter to care for her parents and mm. she felt that guilt of that she wasn't there caring right. so there's a lot of that you know the guilty emotions mm. the exhaustion right. just the pure exhaustion imagine. maybe they're working another job and they're caring for their parents that sandwich generation as everybody knows and mm. and they are just nonstop and and but then there's the joyous side of right. caregiving, getting to spend time with their mm -hmm. um, parent or loved one in, or spouse that um, in their last days or years, and yep. that is just a joyful time too. So there's a whole gamut, and some days it's like a roller coaster, mm -hmm. especially those people who have loved ones with Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is um, that is a, a very difficult situation at times yeah. when. They may be combative, um, mm. and you know, one minute they need, uh, Lord, they're praying, Lord, just help me to right. find the joy in this situation, right. or uh, a diagnosis that they received, mm. and they're like, well, Lord, help me, give me knowledge and wisdom as to what are the next steps to do. Yeah. So this book really addresses, mm. but in stories, and wow. they're short stories because. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, my attention span sometimes yeah. is short, so I love the short stories, and it tells those emotions, but it tells about the story, and it gives um, mm. scripture that goes along with the story. Wow. I actually had um, my Bible study girlfriends get together up in Colorado at my house up there, and we um, did a little women's retreat, and mm. we poured over and prayed wow. over these stories Come for on. these families, and mm. then they helped me find the right scripture for each story wow. that would be uplifting and encouraging, and then mm. helped me to write the prayers, too. There's a prayer at wow. the end of each story mm. to give them that encouragement. Wow. So um, it was it's a beautiful. It was a beautiful book and fifty-two stories. So wow. you could use it as a devotional yeah. if you wanted to. So I love that strength yeah, for the moment. Strength for the moment. How long did it need... take you to write that? Uh, a couple years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, I had a little help from a writing team that we yep. would get together every week and um, go over stories and mm. interviews, and it was a lot of fun. It was a labor of love. Yeah. It was. It was great. Do, do you have a story or two that really sticks out to you? of somebody who maybe read it and it greatly impacted them, inspired them to keep going down the journey of care? You know what I find is that people identify with some of these stories like, oh my gosh, that yeah. was me. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. And yeah. that's another reason why mm. I wrote this book is to let people know that you are not the only one. There yeah. are so many people going through the same thing. Yeah. And to use it even as a support group for family caregivers. And mm. um, I even like to give it to people. You know, you can't do maybe the caring for your friend's parent, but maybe you give that book to them and gives yeah. them encouragement or whatnot. But um, it is it is inspiring to um, just let people know that, you know, it. It, you are not alone, and yes. the Lord is there to help you, and, and mm. Scripture is there to help you, and prayer also is big key. Come on. So mm. good. I'll tell you what, this has been so fun, and just hearing your story, we, we're, we're talking about influence to impact and how God's given us all different mm. levels of influence in different areas. And he calls us to use that influence to impact the world and to see how you and your husband have been so intentional mm -hmm. with the influence he's given you through Home Instead Senior Care and how you've continued to put him at the center of it and the results and the impact you're having globally. globally. I remember you, you telling me a story when we met of some of the, the seats you've been able to sit in or, or tables you've been around. Oh, yes. Politically, I don't, I, I don't know, remember mm. if it was at the White House or, I mean, just crazy some yes. of the spaces you guys have been in. And my husband is on the World Dementia Council. Wow. Um, we have a seat at the table at the G100, the World Economic Forum. Yes. Um, that 
our CEO, Jeff Huber, just came back from. Wow. And you know what the subject is really highly talked about is aging. Wow. Um, the demographics, 90, I mean, there's going to be 80 million seniors by the year 2030. Wow. And mm. who is going to do the caring? And Josh, it's you, the wow. millennials, <laughs> yeah. who yeah. are going to be caring for us. Yeah. And and wow. I think that's one of the things my daughter, who mm. is a millennial as well, is out there hoping to um, help others bring awareness to seniors because yep. it's going to affect every single business mm. in our community yep. one way or another. And it's good to be aware of that. We have a program called Ready to Care, okay. and it's um, online. You can get it on your phone. Mm. Um, these are care missions, and they're simple. Wow. The first care mission, Josh, is say hello to a senior. Wow. The next one could be um, open the door for a senior. And wow. the next week, it might be um, have a meal with a senior. Mm. And so it's that. bringing more awareness. And yep. we're hoping to change the face of aging that way. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I just, I, I love hearing this stuff and I love the heart behind all of it. You and your husband have been very philanthropic and you've given so much back to the community. Talk about how do you guys go about making decisions on how to, to give and steward the resources that God has given you? Oh my goodness. A lot of it is um, impact, yeah, relationships, mm -hmm. um, and of course, we give to senior related yep. organizations and we have um, a Home Instead Senior Care Foundation. Yep. We have a program, Give 65, that helps nonprofits. And a lot of the senior related nonprofits are tiny yep. all around the United States. And now we are into Canada. Mm. And so this helps them to have a platform that they can help raise monies. Mm. And then we um, also donate to them as well. Yep. Um, and we are actually trying to um, raise some money for it as well. And yep. we have a, a million dollar match going on for that Come in on. honor of our 25th yes. anniversary. Yes. But other um, in the community, there's so many needs. Mm. And I know the first time I met you was um, with Abide yep. and um, at the Hope Center. Yep. And so those are um, some of my yep. very big interests, helping youth. I've always been... Mm. And um, I've always loved helping youth and yeah. and very much involved in those organizations. Um, my brother, um, when I was growing up, there was four of us in the family. And okay. I say was. My brother, Jay, passed away 19 years ago. Mm. Um, he was mentally handicapped. Mm. And since his passing, uh, after he had passed, we, uh, my mom and dad and us kids decided that the memorial money was going to go to help start a camp mm. out at Camp Carol J. Holling in his name. Wow. It's the J. Novicki mm. um, program for young adults wow. who are handicapped, disabled. Um, he enjoyed camping. And so we thought, let's let other families and, and young adults enjoy that as well. Mm. And so we helped do the seed money for that. And wow. that was a total God thing because as we approached them and told them what we wanted to do with this money, I tears around the table and mm. we're like, what's going on? You know, we, they said we had hired a director wow. for this to start this, but we didn't have the seed money for it. Wow. And we were just like chills up Come and down on. our bodies. So I'm mm. um, very involved in organizations that deal with handicapped, yeah. disabled. Um, that's where my heart is. Mm. And, um, you know, just friendships, relationships that we have built. Yep. So many great causes mm. out there that we enjoy giving to. And Omaha is a very philanthropic community, yes. which we are yes. very blessed. I've even heard outsiders tell us that, yes. that Omaha is very philanthropic. So, yeah. And the work you guys do is amazing. Yeah. I just Thank you. love what you all do with mm. youth. And it's very inspiring. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. you guys have been a huge part of Omaha's philanthropic community and your business, your work has been so impactful for our city as a whole. Thanks so much for spending time to just share your story with us. Honestly, mm -hmm. I know so many people are going to be inspired and encouraged to use what they have. If people want to follow you, if they want to maybe find your book or give to the foundation or find out more information, where can they go to, to get your guys' information? 
they can go to homeinstead.com. Okay. That's where a lot of our information is housed. And there's also a website on there that is caregiverstress.com. Okay. So if somebody out there is caring for a loved one, they're a yeah. bit stressed or what have you, but we have lots of free resources for families mm. to tap into. Great resources, even videos yep. that talk about even like uh, independence issues, like when yep. is it time to take away the keys and how can you do that? And um, just just a wealth of information. We feel um, a social responsibility mm. to um, help families care for their seniors because it's going to take all of us. It's going to take yep. the body of Christ come on. to help all the seniors come that on. are turning 65 and older in mm. the years to come. And um, so we feel like we're positioned really well to help those families succeed come on. because that's what we want to do is to help our loved ones and mm. um, give them the best care as possible. So, so good. I- I'm starting to understand why our parents had 14 children. Whoa. Yeah, overachievers, <laughs> they, I'll say. They, My gosh. They need a lot of care. Yeah, exactly. Years. Exactly. They'll, they'll, you'll be caring for we'll them. Be care- yes. Yeah. Well, they've cared for us in so many ways. Well, Lori, Absolutely. thank you so much for being oh, with us. God bless you and all you do, Josh, thank and your you. family. It's so fun to meet them. Man, we appreciate it. Well, hey, we want to encourage anybody, if you want to check out other episodes, you can go to joshdotzler.com or go wherever there are podcasts available. And we say it all the time, you're not called to do everything, but you are called to do something. And so find out where God has given you influence and use that influence to impact the world around you.